Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jonathan Burnus, and I'm joined once again by my co-host, Ezra Benjamin. And Jonathan, we'll say welcome back to you. Many, many have heard of the health concerns you've had in recent days, and yet here you are doing great. God did a number of miracles, which I, I, I'll be ready to talk about in an upcoming show uh, very soon. Can't wait. But uh, I was in Dallas and just the lights went out. Uh, turned out that my uh, I had liver failure, uh, which uh, en ended me up in the ICU. I ended up in ICU for almost three weeks. And the Lord, through a number of miracles, one was providing a new liver for me in fo a four-day period. Amazing. People waiting for years, and in four days, uh, I was the recipient of a brand new liver, and I've been recovering well, uh, still in physical therapy, but... Uh, lots of energy and uh, excited about uh, jumping back into the work. Amen. Well, we're thrilled you're back with us and it's wonderful to celebrate with you. We're rejoicing for the miracle of healing with you and your family, Jonathan. And for all believers around the world, in fact, we're rejoicing and celebrating Yeshua, Jesus's atoning death and resurrection at Easter time, which came about at the same time as the holiday of Passover. But there's another Jewish holiday coming up this weekend, an obscure one you may never have heard of right after Passover that aligns with Jesus's resurrection from the dead. You know, Ezra, I, I, I just wanted to begin by uh, sharing a little bit about my background, sure. which was there was a misconception that I was raised with uh, in, in a Jewish the Jewish home I was raised in. And that is that there are Jewish holidays and Christian holidays, and right. they're completely separate. Right. They're unrelated. We have Passover, we have Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and Christians have their distinct holidays, Christmas, Easter, Lent, and so on. Right. And again, no connection at all. But that is not the case. Exactly. Very, very different once I began to read the scriptures and became a follower of Yeshua, right. very different truth. Right, and we understand that Easter actually, or let's say Good Friday, right? Easter weekend, let me zoom out a little bit because we're gonna get to Easter yeah. Sunday in just a minute. Sacrifice, the death, the atoning death of Jesus, Yeshua on the cross, on that Good Friday. Some argue it might have actually been Good Thursday, but that's okay, it's a story for another, another program, was the fulfillment of Passover, that Passover in a way is a shadow and a type of things to come, right? That the Jewish people were commanded to slaughter a lamb and to put the blood of that sacrifice on the doorposts of their house and that the angel of death who came through Egypt and killed the firstborn of every family, the firstborn male, actually passed over. That's the word in Hebrew, Pesach, passing over for Passover, passed over the homes that had the blood of the lamb on it's, their a, it's a foreshadow of, of Messiah's atoning death. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Passover, the, 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 the Seder meal, is rich with prophetic uh, uh, indicators that right. point to the Messiah. And the Last Supper right. was not just a random uh, meal, it was a Passover Seder with right. the matzah, the unleavened bread, with the, uh, the cups of wine. Sure. Uh, in, in every detail, it was a Passover Seder, Absolutely. but Jesus was bringing a fuller meaning to the Seder. Absolutely. Instead of uh, uh, redeeming the people of Israel yeah. in the third cup, he brought new meaning to it. This is now my blood, which redeems you from exactly, sin. Exactly, exactly. In Jeremiah, God says, the days are coming when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Jacob, the house of Judah. And it won't be like the covenant I gave their forefathers, which was written on tablets of stone. This new covenant will be written on tablets of human hearts. In essence, God's saying, I'm gonna make a new covenant and I'm gonna make it possible by the work of my spirit in you for you to walk in the fullness of obedience to me. Yeah. And Jesus says at that Last Supper, which as you said, is a Passover Seder, this unleavened bread, this matzah is my body. Matzah is a symbol of, of something that has no sin. And so Jesus is saying, my body as the sinless lamb is given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And then he takes that cup, part of the Passover Seder, and he says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. So Yeshua at that Passover Seder with his disciples is saying, I am the inaugurator by my death, my sacrifice that's about to happen by my own blood of the new covenant that God promised your forefathers. Some might be listening and saying, so what? Okay, right. so th th there's, th there's a connection between Jewish holidays and Christian holidays, sure. 
But it's more than that. God's calendar is the Jewish calendar. That's right. The, the, the celebrations that we observe as followers of the Messiah, Jesus, right. are connected with a rich history that goes all the way back to the time of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. It's all connected. That's right. It's not the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. That's right. And that continuity is really important to understand. So important. And, and Jonathan, we know followers of Jesus around the world understand that on Easter weekend, uh, we're not only celebrating uh, his death on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, but we're celebrating equally, if not more, that three days later, he walks out of the tomb, which means his sacrifice was accepted. That's how we know we have forgiveness of sins and that he has resurrection life. And if he has resurrection life and offers that to us, then we have resurrection life as well. Amen. And so Easter Sunday is a celebration of that resurrection life. But what's interesting is this, that Good Friday and Passover are linked, but here's what's really linked with Easter. It's a holiday you may never have heard of that's described very briefly in the Old Testament, and it's called the Day of First Fruits, or in Hebrew, Bikarim. It's super interesting, and what happened in Jerusalem every year is that men of Israel would come from wherever, either in the land of Israel or scattered among the nations they were, and they would take from the first, the first wheat or other fruit or harvest to become ready, they'd take a portion of the best of it, and they'd take a single sheaf of that or a single piece of the fruit or a blossom from the tree, and they'd come into the temple in Jerusalem, and they'd wave it before the Lord. And they would say, I'm offering thanks to God that if the first fruit, the Bikur, Bikarim, uh, has been provided by the Lord, then he's going to be faithful to bring an entire harvest. Isn't it beautiful that, that, that that's a prophetic picture of the resurrection of Messiah? It totally is. Hundreds of years before he's ever born. Right, right. And we know that on that first day of the week in the year of Jesus' death and resurrection, on the same day as the men of Israel were coming up to the temple to offer their bikur, their first fruits, Jesus walks out of a tomb as the first fruits of the resurrection from the dead. You have been grafted into such a rich heritage of these festivals uh, that have been brought to fullness through the atoning work of Jesus, our Messiah and Savior. It's so wonderful, it, it really is. is. It is. We have a few resources we wanna get into your hands uh, as you uh, partner with us to reach the Jew first around the world. We're really making a difference in Israel through over 80 partners. Over 80 right? partners yeah. in Israel well, alone and then countless others around the world, not to mention the direct outreaches we're doing in scattered Jewish communities in places like Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, and beyond. And we're really reaching further this year. We're doing more outreaches than we've ever undertaken. most outreaches undertaken. ever in the history of the ministry. And those outreaches cost money. Ministry costs money, which is why we're asking you to make your best gift today to Jewish Voice. And as a thank you for that, we want to get some fantastic resources into your hands. Jonathan, two things. Appointments with God, which walks you through what's called in Hebrew the Moedim, or the appointed times on God's calendar, like those we're talking about today. Passover and Bikarim and Shavuot. And, and again, then also, again th this, this provides yeah. context for Christian holidays that really are right. uh, holidays that were uh, appointed times that were instituted by God long before the New Testament era. And fulfilled and, in Yeshua. And you're tied into all that. It's Amen. amazing. It, it just, it will enhance your faith, deeply enhance your faith. Amen. Another great resource. A short read, but super informative, helps you as a Christian understand specifically the spring feasts on the Jewish calendar. So, Passover. Actually, we begin at Purim, one month before Passover. Purim comes from the book of Esther. Walk you through Passover in the week of, of celebrating unleavened bread, which is a feast, not a fast, and we'll tell you why. Through Bikarim, first fruits, through Shavuot, and what, or what became known in the Christian world as Pentecost, and why we count 50 days between Passover and Pentecost. Want to know more? It's all in here. You don't understand the context of the New Testament until you understand the foundation right. that it's written on. It, it really will change your life. I want you to get involved. Please give your best gift today. The time is limited. Uh, we need your help because we're helping 
uh, Jewish people and their neighbors in need. So pick up the phone, log on to our website, get involved today. God gave his son, Yeshua, Jesus, as a sacrificial offering on our behalf, representing God's very best. In response, every Christian should be eager to give your best, not leftovers, but your first fruits. That's Bikurim. We recommend two books to help you understand Bikurim, maybe for the first time. With the Spring Feasts in Purim, you'll fully grasp the history and prophetic significance of Bikurim and all the seasonal Jewish feasts. Plus, the book includes holiday recipes and a variety of creative ideas to make your celebrations memorable. The book, Appointments with God, Reflections on Jewish Feasts, reveals how Jewish traditions align with the life of Jesus, daily devotional passages, thought-provoking questions, and a space to record your own insights will draw you lovingly into God's presence every day. For your gift of $40 or more, to support the work of Jewish Voice, we'll send you both books, which will be enduring resources for you and your family. Become a new Shalom partner. And to say thank you, we'll send you both books, plus this striking wood Bible stand, shaped like the tablets of the Ten Commandments and inscribed with the words of Joshua 1.8, you shall meditate in the Holy Scriptures day and night. You can probably already imagine the perfect place in your home to display your Bible always open to the chapter and verse where you left off. Make a gift of $30 per month or more, and we'll send all three resources right to your door. Please know that every gift from New Shalom Partners will be directly invested in ministry to Jewish people and their neighbors around the world. I want to encourage you to become a monthly Shalom Partner with us here at Jewish Voice. The greatest blessing you can give a Jewish person is the good news of the gospel. It's the good news that Jesus, Yeshua, is their Messiah. Jesus himself said that he came to seek and save that which was lost. And God's desire is to see all Jewish people and communities come back to him. So if you want to bless the Jewish people, bless them by becoming a monthly partner here at Jewish Voice. Your gift will also help support the relief efforts of more than 80 ministry partners in Israel. That life-saving work includes humanitarian aid, emergency response care, and even helping to build, fortify, and stock bomb shelters. Please call this toll-free number. Our representatives are eager to hear from you. If you prefer, you can give securely online at jewishvoice.tv or by scanning the QR code or mail your most generous financial gift to the address on the screen. Your monthly gift, we believe, is an inspired strategy for harvesting and offering your own first fruits. Thank you so much for giving your best. Welcome back. I want to thank you for two things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank those of you who knew that I was going through health challenges and were praying for me, your prayers worked. God heard your prayers. I'm alive and well, thanks to many of you for praying. And the second thing I wanna say thank you for on behalf of all of us at Jewish Voice is for your ongoing support, for your partnership in the gospel. We simply could not do what we do without you. So right. thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. And particularly now, thank you on behalf of so many Israelis that are receiving aid because of your help. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Ezra, let's jump back into first fruits. Bicharim, this is a, a kind of an un, unknown holiday, right. but it's, and, it's, it's, it's obviously very significant when sure. we talk about the resurrection of life from the dead. Absolutely, and you know what's interesting is Bicharim actually is largely unknown and undiscussed in the Jewish community at large, Jonathan. It's right here, it's in the book, it's in the Torah, which means the first five books of the Old Testament or the Jewish Bible, but two things were required for Bikarim to be celebrated. Uh, one, there had to be a temple in Jerusalem, or you couldn't go into a temple and wave your Bikor, your first fruit before the Lord. And secondly, Israel had to be in the land, which for almost 2,000 years uh, couldn't happen. But at the time of Jesus' death and resurrection, there was a temple, the second temple in Jerusalem, 
and Jewish men and women and their families were still very much living in the land of Israel, even though it was under Roman occupation. Yeah, and the men of Israel from all over the, the known world were traveling to exactly. Jerusalem for the appointed feast. Exactly, so let's, let's dig into the scriptures for a, for a moment if sure. we can, okay? We'll, we'll look at 1 Corinthians 15 first. And uh, I'm beginning in verse 20. And maybe you've read this and you've never understood why Paul uses some peculiar language here. Okay, let's read it together. This says, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. And Christ in uh, English, we can also say Messiah, which comes from in Hebrew, the Mashiach. Mashiach means the anointed one. But Christ, Messiah, has indeed been raised from the dead. Listen, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Why does Paul use such a funny word? And in Greek, you know, Jonathan, this word really isn't used much, if at all, except here in the New word. Testament. It's a Hebrew word. He's writing it in Greek and, you know, as much of the New Testament was written. But Christ the Messiah has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Why does Paul say it that way? Because remember, Paul was a Jewish man who had a transformative encounter with Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, whose worldview and context for everything he was saying was Jewish. And so he right here in 1 Corinthians is, is confirming what we said a few minutes ago, that Jesus actually is the fulfillment of this holiday called Bikarim, or the Day of First Fruits on the, the Jewish calendar. The divine design, it just, it, it just blows my mind every right. time I think about it. This was divine design of God Right. Passover, first fruits. There's, it's not a coincidence right. that he was resurrected from the dead on first fruits. It exactly. was the, the divine plan of God. Exactly. So let's read on because it gets even better, okay? First, this is verse 21 of chapter 15. For since death came through a man, namely Adam, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. Verse 22. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ, so in the Messiah, all will be made alive. Remember the idea with first fruits that we just spoke about, that you, you wave the first ripe part of your harvest, even if it's one sheaf, okay? You wave it before the Lord. You present it to the Lord in his presence, and you say, if one can come to ripeness, then the whole harvest can come to ripeness. That's exactly what Paul's saying right here. Exactly. How do we know that we can have resurrection life through faith in him, through being sons and daughters in the kingdom of God? Because Jesus walked out of a tomb. He was the first fruit of what should be and what will be true for all of us, the resurrection yeah. of the dead. And Paul, Paul goes on to say this, this, is the, the, this is the foundation of our faith. Exactly. If it's not true, everything's in vain. Exactly. Everything hinges on, right. you, uh, on Yeshua being resurrected from the dead. Right. And that and, and following our resurrection because he was resurrected. Exactly, and think about it in agricultural terms. If Israel went to their field and there's nothing ripe, there is no first fruit, then there's not going to be any harvest. You have to have a first fruit to enjoy a harvest later, and that's what Paul's saying. It's, it's also amazing uh, how the understanding of the, heap, the, the roots of our faith right. in, intertwine through the prophetic scriptures of the Absolutely. Old Testament enhance our understanding. You can't really understand this fully Absolutely. unless you understand the cycle of, of Moedim, the right. pointed times, right. and the, 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 the specific prophetic acts, like right. the waving of the, of the, the sheaf. It's, it, it just all comes together. Exactly. And something else that's interesting, and we're going to look at Matthew 27 in just a moment, so flip in your Bibles and we'll get there momentarily, is that you would bring the very first, okay, of, of your, the, the, the first fruit, almost lost my first fruit. You'd bring the first fruit of your harvest to the Lord, but you'd also bring a, a representative sample of the best of your crops. It's actually in the Torah. This is what Israel's commanded to do. So now look at Matthew 27. Maybe you're gonna see something you've never paid attention to. This is beginning in verse 52. This is talking about in the hours and days after Yeshua's sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection, listen. And the tombs broke open, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and they went into the holy city. What's the holy city? Jerusalem. And they appeared to many people. You don't just bring the first fruit. You bring a representative sample of the best of the first fruits yeah, of your crops. Good. Yeshua is fulfilling an ancient Jewish holiday in his resurrection from the dead.
I bet you have a whole new understanding of Easter right now, of Resurrection Day. Yeah. We see so clearly, Jonathan, with the with Bikarim, with Passover, actually with all the Jewish feasts, that Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, didn't come to cancel those things, but he came to fulfill them. And he came, he said by his own words, he came first for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what a privilege it is to be able to share the good news of Jesus, the Messiah, with Jewish people, but not only Jewish people, their neighbors as well, all around the world. And Jonathan, we're doing that during seasons of pandemics, during seasons of war in Israel, rumors of war in places we serve like Ethiopia, uh, other hotbeds of geopolitical activity. And we're doing that year round. This year, in fact, our biggest year ever, but we can't do that without your help. We're going to places that n n no one else goes to. We're really remote corners of the earth. And you get to be part of that. You, you, we, we want you to be part of that. I believe God wants you to be part of this, a, a, a partnership. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without our partners. And we wanna encourage you to become what we call a shalom partner. The word shalom is usually translated peace, but it's so much more than that. It's welfare, it's well-being, it's completion, it's wholeness. And that that's what you're helping to do for the Jew first, if you become a, a Shalom partner, you're helping to bring well-being, wholeness and completion Amen. to Jewish people around the world. That's and, right. And particularly in Israel. That's right. We're serving Jewish people and their neighbors every month of the year. So we're asking you to get involved every month of the year, become a monthly Shalom partner today. And as a thank you for your Shalom partnership, we're going to send you as we discuss those those uh, study guides, appointments with God, walking you through the annual Jewish High Holiday and Jewish Feast calendar, as well as uh, kind of a zoomed in teaching guide on the Spring Feasts and Purim. And as a special gift for your monthly partnership, a devotional or Bible stand for your area where you do Bible study, your devotional space in your home to help you hold the Bible and those materials. Again, as a thank you for getting involved as a Shalom Let me partner. just finish by saying this, the greatest blessing, I, I know that many of you watching love the Jewish people, love Israel. The greatest blessing you can give the Jewish people is the good news of their Messiah. Amen. Nothing is more important. So please pick up the phone, log on to our website and become a Shalom partner today. Not tomorrow, today. God gave his son, Yeshua, Jesus, as a sacrificial offering on our behalf, representing God's very best. In response, every Christian should be eager to give your best, not leftovers, but your first fruits. That's Bikurim. We recommend two books to help you understand Bikurim, maybe for the first time. With the Spring Feasts in Purim, you'll fully grasp the history and prophetic significance of Bikurim and all the seasonal Jewish feasts. Plus, the book includes holiday recipes and a variety of creative ideas to make your celebrations memorable. The book, Appointments with God, Reflections on Jewish Feasts, reveals how Jewish traditions align with the life of Jesus, daily devotional passages, thought-provoking questions, and a space to record your own insights will draw you lovingly into God's presence every day. For your gift of $40 or more, to support the work of Jewish Voice, we'll send you both books, which will be enduring resources for you and your family. Become a new Shalom partner. And to say thank you, we'll send you both books, plus this striking wood Bible stand, shaped like the tablets of the Ten Commandments and inscribed with the words of Joshua 1.8, you shall meditate in the Holy Scriptures day and night. You can probably already imagine the perfect place in your home to display your Bible always open to the chapter and verse where you left off. Make a gift of $30 per month or more, and we'll send all three resources right to your door. Please know that every gift from New Shalom Partners will be directly invested in ministry to Jewish people and their neighbors around the world. I wanna encourage you to become a monthly Shalom Partner with us here at Jewish Voice. The greatest blessing you can give a Jewish person is the good news of the gospel. It's the good news that Jesus, Yeshua, is their Messiah. Jesus himself said that he came to seek and save that which was lost. And God's desire is to see all Jewish people and communities come back to him. So if you want to bless the Jewish people, bless them by becoming a monthly partner here at Jewish Voice.
Your gift will also help support the relief efforts of more than 80 ministry partners in Israel. That life-saving work includes humanitarian aid, emergency response care, and even helping to build, fortify, and stock bomb shelters. Please call this toll-free number. Our representatives are eager to hear from you. If you prefer, you can give securely online at jewishvoice.tv or by scanning the QR code or mail your most generous financial gift to the address on the screen. Your monthly gift, we believe, is an inspired strategy for harvesting and offering your own first fruits. Thank you so much for giving your best. We make time in every program to pray for the needs of, uh, of our partners of our viewers, many have uh, written us, have emailed uh, us and, and uh, asked for prayer. We also always wanna take an opportunity to uh, tell you that there is eternal life waiting for you. Jesus died for you on first fruits. He rose from the dead and he's offering you eternal life, resurrection life for you. Not just eternal life, but abundant life. Don't miss the opportunity to take advantage of that. If you have not committed your life to the Lord, Jesus died for you. He, he, he laid down his life for you. You matter. He cares. And so don't miss the opportunity. All you need to do is to call out to the Lord in faith, just to trust him and ask him to come into your life. And if you ask him, he will, and he'll change you. He'll transform your life. That happened to me 44 years ago, and I've never been the same. So please don't miss the opportunity today. It's no accident that you're watching. It's not a coincidence. It's a God incident. So Ezra, if you'll just join with me, and you'll join with me at home. Lord, I pray for those that uh, have not made a profession of faith, have not called out to you. May they do it now. I pray that you would pour out upon them the gift of eternal life, eternal life, abundant life, and I pray for those that have financial needs, that have physical needs in their body. You're the God of healing. You're the God of mercy. You're the God of provision. You are the, the good shepherd. I pray that you would touch them now. We agree together. Ezra and I declare that your need is met in Jesus' name, in the name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. If you'd like more information about our ministry, you can log on to our website, jewishvoice.tv. One word, jewishvoice.tv. You can find many helpful resources and you can send your prayer request to us right from the website. I want you to know that we care about you and more importantly, God cares about you and we are committed to pray for your needs. So we close the program. I wanna ask you to pray, to pray for Israel. They need our prayers now more than ever. Psalm 20, 122, 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They will prosper who love thee. Thank you, Ezra, for joining me today. And until next time, this is Jonathan Bernas saying shalom and God bless you. Hi, my name is Ezra Benjamin, and I'm the Vice President of Global Ministry Affairs here at Jewish Voice. I'm glad you visited our site today. And before you close this video, I just want to say thanks. Thanks for coming to learn more about what we do. However you got here today, an ad, a search, maybe even a prompting from the Lord, thanks for responding.